So here we have another question from one of my subscribers, and this subscriber would not like his name to be revealed. And his question is, hello, Keith. I've been saved now for almost two years and would probably consider myself a four point Calvinist. There is one point that I don't agree with because I believe it makes it impossible for the Christian or the Calvinist to share the gospel with sinners. Help me make sense of how Calvinists can share the gospel, evangelize, witness, knowing what we know about the Bible and what it says. Thank you. So I appreciate you writing in and asking your question. But first things first, let me make this clear. If you aren't a five point Calvinist, you aren't a Calvinist at all. You can't accept some of the truth while at the same time disregarding the remaining truth. The truth is, it's all true, and for many of you, it's pride that keeps you from accepting each point. Now, each point is true, and each point is supported and backed up by Scripture. Okay, this isn't up for debate, and this truth isn't subjective, it's biblical. It's important to understand that. Now, instead of me answering your question, I found an amazing clip from R.C. Sproul in which he answers, and he answers your question perfectly. And I want to go ahead and play that clip. Now, to reiterate what the question was, the question is, how can Calvinists evangelize? And it's by an immutable decree. Then why should we be involved in evangelism? And now he left that question hanging in the air, and he started to call on the students to answer the question. And I'll never forget how relieved I was, because I was at the extreme right of that semicircle, and he started on the left side. And I thought, oh, boy, am I glad I don't have to answer that. So he looks at the first student, he says, so, well, Mr. So-and-so, wh what would you say? And he said, gee, Dr. Gerstner, you know, I don't know. I've always wondered about that myself. And so he struck out. He goes to the next fellow, and the next fellow says, beats me. He goes to the next, we're all the way down the line, and they were getting perilously close to me, and there was this sense of expectation mounting in the classroom. I felt like Socrates in one of Plato's dialogues, where after all these other people, these lesser mortals, give answers to these profound questions, and they sound okay until Socrates speaks, and then he blows everybody away. And I thought, uh-oh, I'm going to be on the hot seat here. Well, sure enough, they went all the way around the room. Nobody could answer Dr. Gerstner's question. And so he came to me, and I'm squirming. So I tried to answer it, and I said, well, you know, I'm sure this isn't what you're looking for, Dr. Gerstner. I know that there's something far more profound than this that must be the answer to this question. But one small reason why, you know, we ought to be involved in evangelism is that, uh, I said, well, you know, well, Jesus commands us to uh, do evangelism, doesn't he? And Gerstner started to laugh, you know, in his diabolical way. <laughs> he, he said, oh, of course, Mr. Sproul, what could possibly be more an insignificant reason to do evangelism <laughs> than, that, uh, than that Jesus commands you to, that, you're, that, the, that the Savior of your soul and the Lord God Almighty should honor a command, and you think that that may be possibly one small reason why uh, you should be engaged. And boy, the more he went on, you know, the smaller I was going in that chair. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. But I never forgot the point. <laughs> he said, the chief reason why we do evangelism in light of the sovereignty of God is because God is sovereign. And God has not only sovereignly decreed the end, that is, the goal of the redemption of people, but he also has sovereignly decreed the means toward that end. He has chosen the foolishness of preaching as the means by which he will bring people to salvation, and he has commanded his church to carry out that program of evangelism. And he said, look, I'll take care of the election, but you do the preaching. You do the witnessing. That is your responsibility. Now, does he need me? No, he doesn't need me. No, he doesn't need me. God doesn't need me to fulfill his plan. He could do it without me. He has the power to do it without me. Okay. But he has chosen to do it with me and by me and through me and with you and by you. And